Let's go. I only do two things. Sin and win. And I'm feeling particularly pious today, so let's do some winning instead of some sinning. Hey, it's Isaac. Let's... Uh, not a great intro, but that's fine, dude. We got Lemon Mishap, an amazing rate of fire, decent damage, horrible HP, but, uh, dude. Yeah, good good use of Lemon Mishap. Even, like, just before, like, my brain sent the message to press the space bar, and then a millisecond later it went, hey, here's another message, call yourself an idiot for not stopping that mes message from reaching your fingers. But anyway, we're starting at the tears cap, which is ridiculously good. That's... Actually, like, as far as I'm concerned, it's like we're starting with, like, eight or nine damage. Hopefully this is a library back here and we can start to pop off, but... This is actually... From a tier standpoint, I would describe this as an 11 out of 10. We never start with five rate of fire. Maybe if you got soy milk, you start with one. Which admittedly is better, but your damage is gonna suffer. Um, obviously, we've got other problems on this run. Like, for example, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but my HP is literally zero. But, uh, well, zero plus a little asterisk that says, uh, you know, act like you've been there before. I hate that room. It's just like, it's a jerk room, and I don't like it. I think we should try to buy the, uh, the 15 cent item. I don't expect it to be a spirit heart. But it could be something that's useful for us regardless. It might be worth a shot here. Ooh, I didn't even see that there was a second button there, which is my own bad. Not that it ended up mattering. Let's try it. It's habit, which is good. Although a little bit not essential for the present moment. So as, as much as I've tried there, there's no way out. We basically just have to not take damage, which is why I'm going to our item room. Ideally, ideally first we're going to go to this item room. <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks of wins. All erased by this freaking Tomo monster. Shot a bomb off screen I can't even see. Let's go! I'm back. I'm not morose. Still a good rate of fire. Decent speed. Terrible spacebar item. But, dude, I'm actually... My mood went from like a 9 to a 4 right there. I'm not mad, though. I, I can't really be mad at anybody but myself. Even though if I think both of the hits that we took there were a little rich. Like, the... The TNT room, I just hate. I walked in, moved literally zero, as far as I'm concerned at least, and uh, was was summarily hit for one full heart. And then I got hit by a bomb, effectively, from an enemy that uh, did one full heart. So, I mean, what can I say? You know, that's the kind of damage you got to avoid if you're going to pop off with a big streak. Um, you might be saying, NL, the streak's over. What about starting, like, a new save file? I don't know. To be honest with you, the... My my tilt factor on that is to err on the side of not having a new save file. Because I think it, it was, like, not necessarily 50-50, but a pretty even split in terms of, like, what people wanted to see. And then I thought about it and I was like, I love the zany interactions between the items. That's my driving force in Isaac. Do I really want to do 10 runs that only go to Mom's Heart? Are people really going to want to watch 10 runs that only go to Mom's Heart? And then, you know... Another 10 runs that only go to Satan, and another 10 that only go to the Cathedral, etc, etc. So, um, I'm, I'm of two minds about it still. If there's like an overwhelming push to, to go for that, then I understand. But I'm kind of like, I'm in crossword puzzle mode right now with these with these Eden runs. I've been having a good time on them. Uh, I, I am beyond displeased that I squandered a tier cap start. But it was kind of under exceptional circumstances. The two pieces of damage we took there. Not unavoidable, of course, but hard to avoid for certain. It is a bummer, though. Nonetheless. Is that a Tomo buddy you wants in? Hello, Tomo. Welcome to the show, Tomo, everybody. Tomo! So, Tomo, how's your life been recently? I hear you've been working on a new project. Uh, nothing at all. How's that working out for you? Oh, really? No, I hear she's a delight to work with, and, uh, 
Uh, what was it like to uh, work with Ruka on knocking over the, all the amiibos that are on that shelf last night? Nothing. No, no comment. Your silence tells me everything I need to know. If I'm being honest with you. Oh, jeez, careful. I'm gonna tell you a sad story in like 20 words. It's, it's actually gonna be like 130. But Mathis tweeted me. Well, not tweeted me. The, start the story over. I don't want to use my cap yet. Mathis. Left a Skype message and said, I'm going to stream Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Anybody want to join me? No replies. Not because nobody wants to play Battlegrounds with Mathis, but because, you know, everybody's busy doing their own thing. Oh, jeez. You know, everybody's got their own version of Isaac to record. Plus, the Darkest Dungeon DLC came out today. So, you know, Sinvicta and Bear are really into that. And, you know, people are spending time with their families, etc., etc. Um, just now, Mathis has signed on. Playing Wolfenstein The New Order. Not a bad game, of course. Uh, but it's like the best laid plans of mice and men. Want to make uh, John Steinbeck laugh? Tell him your plans of mice and men. Okay, please give me a spirit heart. Uh, that's two bombs. Two bombs! What's the matter, mini me? It's just a little prick. That's, uh, I'm most mad about myself saying what I'm about to say. I use the Dr. Evil voice for both of those, but Dr. Evil is the one who says just a little prick. I forget who says the other part. <laughs> might be that guy who was with Willie Nelson, who might actually be a famous country music artist, and I'm making myself look like a freaking idiot. You know, who looks like a huge Willie? Yo. Get out of here, Dan. Close, close. All right. Get that Skype message out of here. Danny G, what are you doing sending us Skype messages? You have a son. It's 11.43 your time on a Monday night. Put that boy to bed and then put your boy DG to bed so you can wake up early and, uh, you know, change his diapers. It's the dad pledge. Oh, when the dad man's testifying, the greater man believes. He can bring you into paradise, or bring you to your knees. They, yes, that is Jazz Man, Lisa Simpson featuring Bleeding Gums Murphy. Also might be a cover, I got no idea. Let's be honest. Beams, beams, no shots, beams. Let's go. Deal with the devil. Speed upgrade is very worthwhile. I dislike this early Crampo, dude. Tomo, you want to exit now? First, give me one more meow. Oh, like, you gotta let me hear it unobstructed, though. Tomo! He's done it. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate it. Give Tomo a hand, everybody. Welcome to the show, Tomo. Thanks for being here. Go see his movie. Comes out this Friday. It's called The Big Sick. That was just the name of a movie I want to see. I'm not trying to suggest that, you know, any of the lead actors look like cats or anything. It's a little bit of a ridiculous tenant deposit in the first place, I'd suggest. Anyway. So this run is in a very, very good spot. Lump of Coal is a pretty good passive, considering we've got... Uh, okay, yeah. Dude. So we'll summon a... I'm delirious to be used here. Um, you killed You killed my boss! I'm gonna roll uh, uh, Omega Penny here, which is actually Crooked Penny. The reason for that is unbelievably simple, even a child can understand it. It's a better item and it's more fun. It recharges faster, it gives us more Zane potential and is simultaneously stronger. And I resent this for having an 11 room charge, or not an 11, but a 12 room charge, which I think is actually ridiculous, given that the item is sort of not that good. It's not necessarily bad, but 12 rooms to get a boss that other bosses can kill in 10 seconds is like... Extremely who cares voice. Um, when does it come out on PC? But I love Crooked Penny. Probably used it a little too much, people got a little sick of it. Um, for a while, and you know what? That's fine. We've, we've given it a period to cool off a little bit and now it's like, glorious. It was a lot more fun when it, uh, could duplicate empty, uh, pedestals, but... You know, I understand. 
The problem... <laughs> I mean, I, I understand, but I don't understand. I understand it's not working as intended, but at the same time, if you want to nerf the item, um, taking away the thing that, like, super savvy players, not say myself, but the people who, you know, posited the idea in the first place, taking away something that super savvy players can use to win easily is um, a little ridiculous when the item itself is still, like, a 10 out of 10. The occasional doubling or quadrupling is worth so much more than the... Uh, random item pedestals, but I digress. I digress. You gotta go for the free shops. We've had, like, a pretty good track record on these. I wouldn't suggest that, like... I can see. Let's try to duplicate it again. Why not, right? Get another spider mod, dude. Get another I can see forever pill. Who cares? Get another emperor card. Duplicate it. Dude, see if I freaking... Where's my spider mod? Oh, there it is. It was just kind of obscured up there. And then they're all gone. But who cares? We should have, uh, well, actually it doesn't matter. I was gonna say, like, we should have blown up the donation machine and then made a bunch of money and we could have turned a profit. But, dude, this is still pretty sick. Maybe I should have bought the fourth spider mod, but why buy the spider mods when you're getting the spider mods for free? Seems pretty foolish. I like having three spider mods walking around here dealing some, you know, weird status effects on the regular. Kinda cool. And that's the reason that, well, one of the many reasons that Crooked Penny is our item of choice here. When do children go to bed? I ask this question because I've, I've actually lost touch with the real world. I typically go to bed. Here, here's the industry I work in. Let me, let me add a little bit of a preface to that to make the joke hit a little harder. Here's the industry I work in. I have one of the most normal sleep schedules among my peers, and I consistently go to bed around 3 a.m. So... The, the big word there is consistent. Sure, you know, you know, a lot of professionals go to bed at 3 a.m. and wake up at 11. Yeah, like doctors and nurses work in the third shift. Understandable. But like, we have, we have an equilibrium. My sleeping schedule never needs adjusting, except when I change time zones. It's, it's pretty, it's consistent, which makes it, it kind of a rarity in the, well, in, in our YouTube and Twitch circle, at least. I don't know when normal people go to bed, but I especially don't know when children go to bed. Here's the, let me, let me ask a question. If you have a one-year-old child, do they go to bed before or after 7 p.m.? 7 p.m. sounds ridiculously early, yet at the same time, isn't that, like, I, I actually am 50-50 is what I'm trying to suggest. That could be a, a brazen lie, or it could be extremely appropriate. I remember being like, probably like 7 or 8, and going to bed at roughly 8 p.m., I also remember our teacher in sixth grade asking us, hey, what's your bedtimes? And then, uh, no, no. Matter of fact, hell no. Uh, someone in the class said 11 p.m. I mean, this was the year 2000, but someone in the class said 11 p.m. And everybody went like, well, no wonder you got like a C plus average, right? Like, we didn't say that, but I mean, we were all thinking it. At least me and the teacher were thinking it, I'm sure. But, uh, it was like 11 p.m. That's crazy. So that's, I know that children go to sleep before 11 p.m. That's pretty much where my, uh, understanding lies at this point. It's kind of things you gotta know, because I think about it sometimes. I get, Dan also has a great sleep schedule, even though, I mean, he's awake at 11.30 his time. That's, who cares? You know, that's pretty normal for an adult. Um, you know, it's when, like, Letterman comes on. Okay, I'm 100 years old. That's when Jimmy Fallon comes on. It's not that late at night. Um, but sometimes I'll get, like, a message from Dan on Skype at, like, 7 a.m. his time. So it literally comes in at 4 a.m. my time. Dude, we gotta go for the doubled Steam sale. No! It's so much better to get everything for free than to get everything half price. I'd do that again in a heartbeat. Well, knowing what I know, I wouldn't, but, you know, <laughs> if all other things were equal, I would. Anyway, uh, that's crazy. Like, if Dan wakes up before my time, we essentially are living on opposite sides of the world. Because I my sleep schedule is about one time zone off of what it should be. Like, I'm on, you know, Hawaiian time or something like that. And then he wakes up at a normal hour three time zones away. Think about that sometimes. It's almost like like Dan's American and I live in Japan or something like that. We only overlap for a small portion of the day. 
It makes me so sad. But I think that's probably... I don't know if there's any two members of the NLSS crew that actually overlap uh, for more than like 14 hours. In terms of like their waking hours. And I'm not sure if that's mathematically possible to have us all be spread distant enough to make that happen. But I know Bear gets up like early PST. Which probably gives him the best chance. Dude, let's double. I want to double familiars. 20, 20, 24 hours ago. I want to double familiars. Two fart babies, yes. One fart baby, no. I want to double familiars. That was all right. We got a battery charge, which is what we were looking for in the first place here. I want, like... I'll settle for three farting babies. And a partridge in a pear tree. Let's go! So obviously I'm going to take the hit. Could have used High Priestess, but we probably would have been hit at the same time. So now we got four farting babies behind us. And the partridge! You already used that joke in a pear tree. Dude, this run has been... Little on the Zane side, to the extent that I've already forgotten the fact that we lost our streak at the start of this video. Bums me out to think about, but now it's like a memory of a time when I tried so hard and in the end it didn't even matter, you know? It's not so bad. They, they always talked about it as if it was a terrible thing, but I don't think it's that bad. Memory is maybe better than being in the moment if we're talking about something as, as just upsetting as losing a streak in the Binding of Isaac. That would be an embarrassment. We're going to have a deal with the Devil Chance. Uh, we'd like a deal with the Angel. And get that guaranteed Mega Stand play. Get dusted! He got dusted. Deal with the Angel. HP. We'll just snag it. Um, I mean, like... It's, <laughs> the problem, it's not that good. Yeah, I mean, I'm... Oh no, we lost Celtic Cross. We didn't have a bomb to blow this thing up. Well, there's nothing I can do, actually. Unless the door stays open, which I really doubt that it will, but let's go back and try to make it happen. When did I use my last bomb? Probably to blow up the shop, which allowed us to get four farting babies. So, actually, in hindsight, I'm not really that mad. I'm that furious. So, we might not be able to fight Megastan. I would find it in my heart to forgive myself, but it might take some time. Yeah, let's head downwards here. I don't know what it is, you know? I think different people have different uh, different needs when it comes to sleep. I, uh, I used to have insomnia, again, I don't like to say because it might be like an actual medical term. This is what people go like, oh, I have OCD. When they, what they really mean is like, I prefer when my house is clean. You know, OCD is like, can't stop washing my hands. I'm just gonna keep, gotta keep washing them. I don't know why I keep doing the hand thing, you know? So I, I don't like to make light of like actual conditions and you know that not being able to sleep whether insomnia or not is so frustrating. You're like awake and you're like I feel awake right now but I know that as soon as I have to be awake all I'm gonna want to do is sleep and I'm gonna feel like overtired and like garbage. So I I relate to that 100%. Many like a, a few times at least when I was in Korea, you know, teach a full day of classes, come home, can't fall asleep, teach another full day of classes. Then go home, they sleep for like two hours. And be like, why can't I sleep? Just the most frustrating feeling. One of the more frustrating feelings, at least. Um, but my, my insomnia, ever since I started doing this job, it has worked itself out like 98%. There's probably like one day every two months where I, I get like four hours of sleep. Like I find it hard to fall asleep, but once I'm out, I'm out like a light. And I think it's because I don't have anything to wake up for. If I have to wake up for anything, it's a nightmare. You know, even if it's like, oh, I have to be awake at 9 a.m. And I go to bed at like 2, I set like 8.50, 8.55, 9, 9.05, 9.10, 9.15, and then one Hail Mary like 9.30 alarm that's like, if you're seeing this, you better be out of the house. So I think it's, for me, it's like not having to be up is is what allows me to fall asleep more easily. But I think the reason some other YouTubers end up with like busted sleep schedules is quite the opposite. Is that without having like a place that they have to be, they, uh, they're they never forced to maintain a routine. And as a result, you know, they're like, I'm not tired, so I'm not going to go to sleep. And then 
They don't go to sleep for like an extra hour and then it just starts that cycle of, it's the summer vacation cycle, you know, of like, your, your sleep schedule just gets off by like an hour more every single day. I can relate to that as well. But I'm happy I've, I've found my groove. That's honestly one of the reasons, it's a little inside baseball here, but hopefully at least interesting while also being completely ridiculous. Um, dude, thank you. Uh, it's one of the reasons I like the NLSS being in the early afternoon. It means my sleep schedule actually cannot get worse than waking up at like 2 p.m. Actually, more like waking up at 1 p.m. Because the half the shows are at 2 p.m. now anyway. So that might seem ridiculous, but you know, a lot of people waking up at like five or six. So I'm happy I have something that kind of anchors me. It's like, you know, I'm not about to miss a show because I, you know, I woke up late because I'm gonna get, first off, it's my job and I'd feel bad. And then there's the monetary issue of like, I'm basically skipping a day of earning. And then there's the element of like, I'm gonna get roasted because <laughs> I couldn't wake up for 2 p.m. That's l ridiculous. But honestly, having like that degree of routine is, is important for me, I think, because it means if it ever gets to be like four in the morning, I'm like, I don't want to stay up because I have to be up soon. But I don't deign to have all the answers. It's a pet peeve of mine. People go, oh, you know, oh, you have depression? Well, I used to be sad, and then I just watched the Great British Bake Off, and now I'm happy all the time. So that's, you know, that's, I'm, I am actually, like, essentially ignorant of what depression feels like. I'm just using that as an example uh, of something that I hear all the time. Like, oh, I have a, you have anxiety? Yeah, you know, sometimes when I'm on a roller coaster, I get nervous. But then I just thought, ah, eh, probably not going to die. And it, it, it solved itself, you know. It's, it's not really helpful. Janice, your your anecdotal evidence is not helpful, Janice. You're describing a normal range of human emotions, not brain chemistry run amok, Janice. I don't know anybody named Janice, which is why I'm leaning on this so hard. Because I can. It'd be like the ultimate insult if I actually have just forgotten someone I know named Janice. First, it's like, he's talking about me. It's, oh, he doesn't even know I exist. Oh, Little two uh, golden hearts here, not even mad. Um, we're gonna try to get boss rush, but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, all I can really say is if you have trouble sleeping, you know, I understand. Your uh, your concerns resonate with me. For a lot of my life, uh, probably like once a week, I would get like, you know, three hours of sleep or less. Now it's. Three hours of sleep or less is actually once a year. That's like, a, hey, we booked a flight and it's at like 8 a.m., which means we have to be at the airport at 6 a.m., which means we have to be in a taxi at, uh, you know, 5.30 a.m. That's like the, okay, well, tomorrow's just going to stink. <laughs> that's, tomorrow's going to suck and then it'll be good. Uh, that's like a once a year thing. But yeah, you know, four or five hour sleeps. Maybe like once once every two months or something like that if I... Oh, I didn't go to the item room. No, I did go to the item room. I didn't go to the shop. Still pretty bad. But it's like, hey, quit bragging. Basically. Hey, let me uh, inundate you with uh, how healthy my sleep life is. While you watch this in bed and are distracted by me speaking a little bit louder than usual right now. Jerk move, Anel. Jerk move. No, thank you, sir. Okay, well, here's the deal. If it doubled, I would have... I would have taken the items and gone for it. But without it doubling, nah. Gonna play, gonna play football this year, John? Without doubling, I, I can't justify it. We got a cool run going on here, though. Don't squander your devil deal chance. This is like the, the worst setup you can have for devil deals. We whiffed on a good chance and lost a spirit heart. So now we have a 100% chance, but if we ever get hit without getting a spirit heart first, you know, the, the whole thing comes undone. So it is very, very squanderable right now. And I can't help but think that four farting babies is not necessarily gonna help me that much. But what about a partridge in a pear tree? Four farting babies, three spider mods, two...
0.67 luck. And, uh... Space bar is crooked penny. Let's try that again. Four, five squandered wins. Four farting dudes, three spider mods, 2.67 luck. And our space bar is crooked penny. This is why nobody invites me to go caroling. They always invite me once, and I go, I'm not a very good singer. And they go, oh, that's no problem, we just do it for fun. And then, they never get a call back. <laughs> I warned you. I'm cognizant of my own weaknesses in the acoustic department. I think, lyrically speaking, if you ever need somebody to come up with, you know, parodies on the fly, I've got a, I've got a fast brain when it comes to searching the rhyming dictionary and, you know, trying to make a bit up on the fly. And I'm very grateful for that. I think that's a relatively rare skill and a valuable one to have in, the, in this business. It helps to be quick-witted. And at the risk of tooting my own horn, I think I fit the bill. But singing, just garbage. Try. I try to walk away and I choke. I might try to say goodbye and I choke. That's it. Freaking ruined it. Um, but yeah, the the singing is just does not does not work with my brain for whatever reason. If you play me two pitches simultaneously, I'll go. Yeah. Oh, that one's higher. That one's lower. This is not a joke, by the way. If you play me a note, and then you wait five seconds and play me another note that's different, I'll be like, that's the same note. I think something on a on a tonal level is like broken in my brain. Or you could play like an like an A or something. You could play like an F right after it, and I'll be like, that's the same note. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. You know, I'm 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 meant to be the Bernie Taupin. To somebody else's uh, Elton John. The Louis Vuitton John. Louis Elton John. There we go. It, it works. It took an extra second. I'm not going to waste my doubling on a Bob's Rotten Head. What are we going to do? Get our get a solo Bob transformation? It probably doesn't work. Well, we do still have the deal with the Devil Slash Angel. Honestly, at this point, we got HP. And the run's not set in stone that we're going to win. So I'd really welcome the deal with the... Uh, the devil, to be honest, we should have been hit there. I'm gonna walk this dog through spider mod. A little, a little anxious about this. It's Mr. Fred. He's been showing up with a little bit more uh, common lately. Not with a little bit more, you know what I mean. He's been showing up a little bit more commonly lately. Commonly, it's the boss on the womb. And this is not the tune that I remember. I have to admit, I go to, like, probably the grocery store with the best soundtrack I've ever been a part of in my life. I'm going to continue that anecdote momentarily. Obviously, I mean, we'll take the ability to fly. Um... Why not double it? Well, I don't... What do we get for doubling the ability to fly, right? Oh, no! <laughs> that was not smart. Um, we were at the grocery store yesterday. What did they play? First song. So no one told you life was gonna be this way. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah, that's right. The Friends theme song, I'll Be There For You by the Rembrandts. That's a song you only hear in grocery stores these days. The rest of planet Earth is like, get that song out of my face. Grocery stores are like, our time is now. And you never hear the second verse of that song. It's, it's always only the friends part. So to hear the second verse is like, you know, seeing your teachers at the grocery store. It's like they're real human beings, to paraphrase Mean Girls in like the worst way possible. Um, good movie, by the way. Second track. Do you think you're better off alone? Ooh, do you think you're better off alone? You know, that's right. Alice DJ, better off alone. Not a very good song, but it's been forever since I heard it. Um, third song was uh, Rhythm is a Dancer. It's a serious answer. Or something I can't remember the lyrics, but uh, it's a sure companion. Something, something in the air. I don't know when the grocery stores all decided to play like. You know, early 90s popular dance music, but I'm for it. They did play What Is Love, but I almost don't want to mention it because it was like a meme song, but... 
Dude, our damage is 3.4. I'm starting to get a little salty about this. Either way, um, at least our rate of fire is great. Uh, they also played that one that goes like, get over yourself, goodbye. Uh, something, 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 yeah, yeah. I forget. <laughs> get over yourself, goodbye. That's Eden's Crush, get over yourself. This is a Canadian, I didn't realize. So, oh wait, no, that's Eden's Crush is American, sorry. I thought Eden's Crush was the Canadian one. I'm thinking of something cherry from the television show Pop Stars. Let me see. Eden's Crush. That's right. It has Nicole Scherzinger in it. Dude, I went through this exact, like, methodology very recently. Because I told Dan, I was like, Eden's Crush, Pop Stars, Nicole Scherzinger. And I've forgotten it and purged it from my memory, but now it's back. I, I don't know how I mind flooded myself into believing that this run was great. It's not terrible, but it's like pretty bad. We have 3.5 damage on the Womb 2. Hilariously, we made boss rush. Chose not to do it. We will make the hush fight, and I'll tell you straight up, we're going to choose not to do it. Now, 3.5 damage? No way I'm doing the hush fight, you know? You're going to have to give me two hours of... My time back. Duh, 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 duh. We're just gonna be firing shots endlessly. I'm just looking for a tinted rock, cause you know I don't wanna, I don't wanna waste my time on this room. Fighting these enemies have no respect for me. What do you think? Secret room? With no secret room access, I'm out of here. Like Kevin O'Leary on Shark Tank, ever since he was a turncoat, went to the United States. To make more money on television, came back to try to win the leadership of the conservative party, and then in, in you know, a surprising sort of like one-two punch, dropped out of the race, endorsed another candidate, and then that candidate lost. That's exactly what we just did right there. Please don't get hit. Get these farting babies lined up as an impenetrable shield. They're not going to block beams, though. And they shots can curve past the wall. But dude, they're <laughs> they're holding the line. That was actually sweet. We didn't get the Doesn't matter what they say. This is from the Professor Nate. With Janet Jackson number 2. And Eddie Murphy as Sherman clone. Okay, I don't know. That, I mean, that is off the Nutty Professor 2 soundtrack. It doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter by Janet Jackson. But we don't need to go down this road like 100% here. I'm kind of like focusing. I don't know why I just slipped into this voice. But I'm kind of like, uh, dude, I, I'm not mad. I just think it's funny that you would give me a run with 3.4 damage. On the cathedral, like, I think it, you know, you're welcome to do that, but it says a lot about the kind of game you are right now, honestly. And I guess the joke's on me, because I thought we had something a little different and more respectful going here, but clearly I'm the fool. That hurts, but it's not like we had a devil chance regardless. Oh, come on, Damien. You got, you know, 10 HP. Oh, dude, I can't pay my dinners with 10 HP, okay? I like Wagyu beef. This is strip loin damage at best. Can't even get a side of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Damien's very concerned about his posh dietary needs. How am I supposed to get the kale gomai? If I've only got 3.67 damage on the third floor. Riddle me this. Now it's become like a valley girl. I don't know. We're getting into dangerous territory. There's a lot of characters from the NLSS I don't want to revisit. Like Daryl, the uh, social outcast who may have also murdered his family and worships the devil. <laughs> that character's got some, he's got some workshopping to do. But I really like Tarek, who is not Tarek from... Flip this house or love it or list or whatever the heck, but 
you know, Terry K, who's a, hey, I'm Tarek. Me and my brother Derek run a social media firm, and we're here to pump up your image. First off, bro, you want to get a million followers? You gotta delete all the anti-Semitic tweets. Those are not very Tarek right now. They are not popping off. I'm gonna need you to put a cork in that. Speaking of which, we're doing a live remote this week at a winery. We'd love you to bring down your finest Zinfandels and or Cabernet Sauvignons. That character is from an HGTV show or like a, maybe more like an E! Entertainment show. Look, I used to be Tom Sizemore's assistant and this attitude does not fly in Hollywood. Let me tell you. That actually might just be Nick Kroll's body, Bobby Bottle Service without the accent. Whatever. No, because I, I picture Tarek is like extremely yoked. He's jacked, but then he has like an image that hides his jackedness. Like he wears like a, a purple t-shirt that costs $375. And then over top of that, I got a blazer. Because my image says, I'm here to have, I'm here for business. There's nothing to say that business can't be pleasurable as well. That's the Tarek brand. And that's why I got the blue check mark. That would be the name of the show right there. Bro, you gotta take more pictures of brunches. Brunches are hot this week. I want you to get some hollandaise, get some fried eggs, get some English muffins. Make yourself a Benny D. Take a picture of it and say hashtag blessed brunch goals. 40 retweets and you win this week's immunity challenge. The loser will be killed for sport. That's right. See you next week on <laughs> Surviving Social Media. For some reason, I'm your Australian host, Paul Hogan, who's now New Zealandy for some reason. An interception to a little Michael Caine at the end. Yeah, that's right. I think we should just kill them all. Demonic Michael Caine? What, did, what got into you? Oh, gee, ever since the apocalypse happened, I just got a taste for the human flesh. Slightly changed my voice as well, in case you didn't notice. Not quite that cockney charm I used to have. A little bit more <laughs> of a Kiwi thing go ever since we all moved to Australia. And now, I don't know, I got like a little bayou thing. Okay, let's... Dude, forgive me for meandering commentarily on this run, but do you see the fact that we have 5.67 luck, but yet 3.40 damage? It makes me want to cry. At least that worked. Okay, we're gonna double our damage. We already got Bookworm, I think, so it's not super relevant. Um, we definitely want this. We definitely don't care about that, but we'll take it regardless. And yo, listen, Odd Mushroom is a modest damage increase. Robo Baby 2.0, nobody cares. Two good pills, please. Ooh, two good pills we can't take advantage of, but still. So just keep them at a distance. Treat these guys like I store mushrooms. Feed them species and keep them in the dark. <laughs> Trying to watch my language a little bit. It's just a word, NL. I know, okay? And like, I know. I'm with you. Blink twice if you're being held against your will. Yum hard. I want to explore the floor because we have six luck. So, wait, wait, give me a second. Six luck is giving some hope to me. We could salvage this mediocre run. Yeah, that's this love by Maroon 5. You know, I'm not the biggest Adam Levine fan, but you gotta admit the kid's got a voice. He's also like 10 years older than me, and I just called him a kid, which is insulting. But you know what? I'm starting to think that guy just might make it. With a little can-do attitude and some luck. Won't be the last time you've heard the name Adam Levine. And every time you say something like that in an episode, you just mutter a prayer under your breath, please don't die in a terrible accident before this video comes out. Not only because that would invalidate 38 minutes and 54 seconds of work on my end, but it would also make me look like a terrible human being. You know what? I'm out, dog. I'm out like 
Brett W. Wilson was after the third season of Dragon's Den because he was too nice to say no to people. So Telepathy v. Mega Satan. I mean, you saw it work there. Seems pretty dope if you ask me. Hey, bro, Tarek here. Just gotta let you know, dope is so last week. Now we say dead ass. I don't know what that means. Tarek, I don't know. Tarek, why are you in my house? Bro, you gotta lock your doors. Locking your doors is like a plus floor. <laughs> Sorry, I misspoke. You didn't hear that. Locking your doors is like a plus four on clout this week, bro. Hope you don't mind. I stole your car as well. Ate some of your food. T I'm gonna be honest with you, Tarek doesn't have anywhere else to go. Vanessa threw me out. Because I called her Vanessa, but her name is Tanessa. And I gotta say, calling your wife by the wrong name is very not in this week. Extremely not cool, but I'm waiting on my sources to report back with some data on that. Tarek out, but also still here. Sounds like he's going through a heart. I feel bad for that guy. It's, it's it's hard to be a social media guru this day and age. Maybe. I don't know. I got some pretty good social media advice. It's uh, take pictures of your cats when you want to and everything's going to be okay. Stop shooting your beams at me. Telepathy does not stop beams and this presents a problem for me. We should be using... Uh, this line of farting babies to stop any and all like potential incursions on my real estate here bro you got to stop calling it my real estate property ownership is at an all time high in terms of public derision right now seize the means of production is super hot right now Let's go. Please be dead. I'm a little nervous. We're going to die. Oh, I mean, we got no streak. What do I care? Let the bodies hit the floor. That's what I always say. We dropped the cancer trinket. Now that I realize that, I'm feeling a little silly. So that's the main value of telepathy right there. Dude. Yeah, dude. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the audience, Tarek. Sorry, dude. Misunderstanding the person that you're talking to is very in this. <laughs> I'm out. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Is that Tomo? Hello. Oh, it's Ruka. Hello, buddy. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. you got to click that like button, bro. It's really in this week. And subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Of course, that's hot right now. I'll see you next time. Will you come back if I promise to never do the Tarek voice again?